Hello, this is Music Tech Help Guide. Welcome to this video tutorial for new users on how to get started in Pro Tools 10. In this video, I'll show you how to use both audio tracks for recording uh, external instruments and microphones, as well as software instruments. The first window you're going to see when you start a new session is uh, this quick start window, and this will pop up uh, anytime you open up Pro Tools. Uh, if you try to start a new session by going to File, New Session, you'll get a similar window to this, but not the exact same window, but you should be able to start a session from there. I'm going to click Create Blank Session, because that's what we want to do. I'm also going to open up the session parameters, which essentially control the quality and file type settings for our session. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is we can choose between a WAV or AIFF type file. I'm going to use WAV because it tends to be more universal. Next, the bit depth, which in short just adjusts the uh, dynamic range of the mix headroom of our session. Let's stick with 16 uh, for now. And then the sample rate, uh, which controls the frequency range of the session. And for now, I'm just going to stick with uh, 44.1. Now, if you're working on something that you plan on releasing professionally, you may want to uh, choose a higher bit depth and sample rate, but for this project, we're just going to stick to 16 and 44.1. So I'm going to click OK, and the next thing that Pro Tools is going to make you do is save your session somewhere. It forces you to save your session, uh, and you can't run the session directly off of RAM like you can at Logic or Ableton Live. So I'm just going to save this to the desktop, and I'm going to call it Demo Session, and then just hit Save. It's going to build our session, and we're going to get this window. This is the edit window, and I'm just going to increase the size of the window so it takes up the full screen. Now, you may see this area on the left, and you may also see this area on the right. Uh, this is the clips list. It keeps track of all the clips, also known as regions, in our session. And on the left, we have our tracks list and our groups. Uh, we're not really going to use these in this video, so I'm just going to show you how to hide them so you can have a little bit of extra room. Just go down to the bottom left, there's a little arrow button that hides that one, and a little arrow button on the right that hides the clips list. All right, so as I said before, this uh, window that pops up is called the edit window. Uh, there's actually two main windows in Pro Tools. The other one, if we go up to window, is the mix window. You can also get there by pressing command equal sign on a Mac. Uh, right now, there's really not much going on here. It's just a, a blank gray window. Uh, so we're not really going to use this right now, but uh, it's because we don't have any tracks yet. If we had tracks, we would see channel strips for each track that we've created. So right now we're just going to work uh, with the edit window. But that's just how you can switch between the two. At the beginning of the video, I told you we'd get started with an audio track and an instrument track. So let's do that. Uh, to create a track, you just go up to Track, New. Or you can press Shift-Command-N on a Mac. And uh, it brings up the New Tracks dialog. Now, one of the cool things about Pro Tools' New Tracks dialog is that you can create multiple tracks simultaneously as well as multiple types of tracks simultaneously. So what we're going to do is create one mono audio track that has a time base and samples. Then we hit this plus sign, and we're going to create one stereo instrument track, and it automatically changes the time base to ticks. I really don't want to go over the different time bases right now just because it's outside the scope of this video, but a tick is essentially 1 960th of a beat. And the reason why the instrument track changed to ticks is that the instrument track works within the MIDI realm, which splits each quarter note into 960 ticks. Also, one other thing to keep in mind is that with your audio track, we want it to be mono because we're only using one microphone. And in my case, I'm actually going to plug uh, one guitar in. The only time you want this to be stereo is if you're using a stereo pair of microphones or any device that has a stereo out or if you're using a stereo mic. If you choose a stereo format here as opposed to a mono format and you're only using one microphone, you'll find that the recording will only record onto the left channel of the track rather than the left and the right and your right side will be left completely blank. Alright, so let's click create to create our two tracks and what it does is you can see we have our two tracks over here on the left uh, we have our one audio track and one instrument track and uh, one thing I'm going to do to make this a little easier to see is I'm going to make them uh, the tracks a little bit taller and so if you drag over the lower part of uh, each track there you go you can expand these out to make them a little larger I'm also going to rename these two tracks I'm going to double click on audio one and I'm going to call this guitar because I actually have a guitar plugged into my audio interface. And for instrument one, I'm going to double click on that and call this piano because I'm going to use a piano synthesizer. 
All right, the next thing we need to do is uh, to set up our audio interface that, so that Pro Tools can communicate with it. And an audio interface is simply just a hardware device that could receive the signal from a microphone or a guitar or maybe even a MIDI controller if your MIDI controller is not USB. Now, the most common ones are M-Boxes as well as the Fast Track series uh, for beginners. I'm actually using an 8-track using an Alesis Firewire interface. All right, to set this up, just go up to Setup, Playback Engine. And at the top of the Playback Engine, there is a list of all of the available audio devices. Uh, this includes the built-in input and output. You may also see built-in microphone. Uh, I also have an HDMI device hooked up as well as the Pro Tools Aggregate I.O., which allows you to use two different interfaces simultaneously, but you'll only see this if you have a Mac. So I'm going to use my Alesis FireWire interface. Now, if you, your interface doesn't show up here, there's a few things you can do to troubleshoot it. First, make sure you have the proper drivers installed and that it's properly connected. Uh, and the newer M-Boxes, they tend to fall asleep, so you may have to turn it off and then turn it back on. All right, so after you choose your interface, uh, you may get this window, and this is just saying that... Uh, we need to uh, save our session, close it, and reopen it. Pro Tools makes us do this, so let's say yes, and we click OK. It re saves and reloads the session with our new audio interface selected. There's one more thing I want to adjust up in the uh, playback engine, so let's go back there, and that is the hardware buffer size, this HW buffer size option, and you get a sa set of uh, sample sizes here. Now, in short, uh, what the buffer size controls is the amount of latency or signal lag that you get in, uh, while recording and during playback. It also controls the number of effects plugins and instrument plugins that you can use. With a lower buffer size like 32, you're going to have a lot less latency. With a higher buffer size like 1024, you're going to have a lot more latency. With a low buffer size like 32 samples, you generally want to use this for recording uh, so that your singer or performer is not distracted by a slight uh, slapback delay in the signal. Uh, if you are mixing, mastering, or editing, you want to go with a higher buffer size. Uh, although it does give you more latency, it also allows you to use more effects and instruments plugins simultaneously. Uh, what you may find is that if you have too many plugins in your session and your buffer size is set too low, you may get an error in the signal. But we're going to use 32 for today because I'm... Uh, uh, I'm recording, um, and for now we're going to ignore the host processors and CPU usage limit. I'd love to say that we're ready to start recording, but there's actually one more thing we need to do. Uh, go up to Setup and I.O., and what this is is we're going to set our input, output, and bus uh, paths back to default. And the reason why we're doing this is if you are in a situation where this computer is shared by many individuals, maybe in a classroom setting, uh, which a lot of my students are, uh, you're going to want to go under your input tab and you're going to want to set this to default, go under the output tab, set this to default, and also the bus tab and set this to, to default. What this does is it sets your input where signal is received, the output where signal goes to, and the buses, the digital paths in between. It sets these all back to default because you never know what the last user before you set them to. So once you set those over to default, just hit OK and we're almost ready to record. All right, so my first instrument I'm going to record is my guitar, and I need to tell this track to receive a signal from my audio interface. Now, right now, my guitar is plugged into input two on my interface, so I need to tell this track to uh, receive a signal from input two on my Alesis interface. So the way you do this is you go to your I.O. here, and by the way, if you don't see this, you can go to this little gate-looking icon, uh, click on it and go down to I.O. and make sure I.O. is shown. I.O. is just your input and output. So the upper tab is my input tab where sound is received, and the lower tab is the output tab where sound goes to. So right now my output's going to analog one and two. That's essentially my main stereo output. And my input, I'm going to go under inter interface, and I'm going to choose line two or input two because that's where my guitar is plugged into. So now this track will receive an audio signal from input two from my interface where my guitar is plugged into. So if I play my guitar right now, nothing's gonna happen. Uh, what I have to do is I have to arm the track for recording, and that's this little circle button right here. And so what I should be able to do is turn that on, uh, play a few notes on the guitar and that you should be able to hear, or you might be checking your mic, so uh, do a, a couple checks into your mic and you should be able to hear it yourself.
All right, there we go. You saw the uh, uh, the volume meter there flash and show me that I, I am uh, getting volume, but this little red light at the top uh, is clipping, and that basically just means I'm getting digital overload. So I'm just going to take a moment and turn down the gain on my interface, which should correct that. Much better. I'm not clipping anymore. And uh, by the way, if you want to get rid of this clip light, just click on it and it'll go away. All right, there's two last things I need to do before I can start recording. I need some sort of a timing reference to keep me in time, uh, to keep me uh, to the tempo of the project. And so what I need to create is a click track. And what the click track does is it creates a metronome reference to keep me in time. So I'm just going to um, collapse these a little bit just to free up a little bit of room for the click track. And then I go up to cl track, create click track. You don't have to go up to new and create a track. You just go to create click track. So click on that and it creates a click track down at the bottom for me. So anytime I press play or record, you're gonna hear a metronome uh, playing in the background uh, and it uh, beats at the tempo of the project. So where is the tempo of our project? Well, right up here uh, by default, the tempo of Pro Tools projects are set to 120 BPM, that's beats per minute. So if we double click on this little red arrow, it brings up the tempo change uh, dialog and I can type in a new tempo. So I wanna go a little slower, so I'll type in 100. Um, I should show you a couple other controls. Uh, one set of controls that's important to have is the transport and the transport is essentially the playback controls. You can view them in two places. You can go up to window, transport, and it opens up a separate transport panel. We have uh, back to beginning, uh, backward, forward, uh, to the end, stop, play, and uh, also record. Um, there's another view. If you go up to the upper right, this little down arrow, and whoop, that's off screen. Let me move this so you can see it. And it says transport, and you can show that. And so that's what I'm gonna use today, just because it's a little simpler. By the way, if you see this little uh, loop thing, this little loop arrow around the play button, that just means you're in uh, loop playback mode. You can actually turn this off just by uh, uh, pressing uh, control and clicking on it. It goes back to normal playback mode. All right, um, a couple other commands that are uh, good to know. The first is if your playhead is anywhere else in your session too far ahead and you want to go back to the beginning, hit the uh, return or enter key. It go back, goes back to the beginning. Uh, pressing uh, play starts the playback and it'll play through your session. Uh, another common key command is to record. So we're finally ready to record. And the key command to record on a Mac is command spacebar. But you, if you have a number pad in your keyboard, you can just hit three. Or another way is you can just hit the uh, record button in the transport and then hit play. It'll start recording. All right, that worked out all right, and then I was able to stay in time because of the click track. Uh, one more thing I'm going to do to the guitar just to enhance it a little bit is to uh, go to my inserts here and go to plugin, and then uh, I'm actually going to add an amp simulator. It's under uh, the harmonic tab, and this comes with uh, Pro Tools 10. This is the 11 free, and essentially what this is is a it's an effects plugin but it's a, an amp simulator, uh, it's just a basic, basic amp simulator. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to choose a different setting. I'm going to choose kind of like a crunch setting, this vintage crunch setting, uh, cause I don't want a whole lot of gain. Let me pull the gain down a little bit. And so I've enhanced my guitar sound a little bit. All right, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to uh, use the instrument track that we have out here. Uh, we already created an instrument track. We already named it piano. What we need to do is go under this track's inserts to insert a virtual instrument, essentially a software synthesizer. So we can go under multi-channel or multi-mono plugin. Uh, it all depends on whatever format it comes in. We go down to instrument, and we'll see a whole list of uh, instruments that Pro Tools comes with. Some of the ones that I have here are not ones that Pro Tools comes with, but most of them are. 
and uh, I'm going to choose the Mini Grand plugin, which is uh, just a basic uh, kind of grand piano uh, sampler uh, virtual instrument. So it, it sounds like a real life uh, grand piano. Um, now, as long as you have a MIDI controller connected, by the way, that red line means it's loading. Uh, as long as you have a MIDI controller connected, you should be able to trigger this uh, virtual instrument with your MIDI controller. Now, if uh, you should be able to essentially just arm the track and it should just work. If it doesn't work, it probably means that you need to install the uh, the newest drivers for your MIDI controller or uh, see if it's set up correctly. So let's uh, click on click arm and play a few notes. All right, and that worked just fine. So now what I can do is I already have the track armed. All I have to do is simply hit record and I can play the piano uh, along with uh, the chords in my guitar track. By the way, one thing we could do to make this a little easier to see, but you don't necessarily need to keep this window open. But uh, what we can do is down here in the bottom corner, you can adjust some zoom settings. Now, there's like a million ways to zoom in Pro Tools. That's just one way to zoom. So, uh, okay, so that's that, that works fine. Uh, I'm actually going to pull the volume of my guitar track down a little bit because I'm sure it's going to be a little loud. So what I'll do is uh, go into my mix window, command equal sign, and notice that we have tracks here. Now we have our click track, our piano track, and our guitar track. I'm going to pull down the guitar so it's not super loud, and then I'm going to record my piano. Uh-oh, that, uh, that was unexpected. Uh, well, it's, I guess it's a good idea that this uh, error popped up because it's a common error, uh, error that a lot of my students get. Essentially what this is telling us is that we need to increase our buffer size or remove plugins because there's too much going on simultaneously. Uh, and if we want to have all these plugins, which I really don't have that many, uh, we need to increase our buffer size. I'm not really sure why this is happening because my computer has 16 gigs of RAM, and usually when you have that much RAM, it's not an issue. Uh, I think it's probably because I'm running Pro Tools and a video capture software simultaneously. Uh, so to fix this, we're going to go back up to our setup, our playback engine, and we're just simply going to set our hardware buffer size a little higher. Sure, we'll do... Uh, uh, let's do 128. Yeah, that'll work fine. Um, yeah, we'll leave this other stuff alone. So 128 give us a little more latency, but we should be able to handle all these all these plugins. All right, and there you go. Uh, that's how to get started with audio tracks as well as uh, getting started with uh, instrument tracks. I hope the video helped. If you have any uh, questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section below. But there is one thing I don't want you to ask me. Please, please don't ask me about uh, setting up Pro Tools on a PC. I haven't used a PC in like seven years for production, so... Uh, I honestly cannot answer any questions about uh, setting up on a PC. But I hope you enjoyed the video. Again, please leave any comments uh, below, and thanks.